Skill-based matchmaking, the force that haunts seemingly every multiplayer game in our industry. An invisible entity, a curse, and a problem that just shouldn't be a problem. In our last video, we discussed the relationship between casual and competitive design. Originally, I had a small section on SBMM that I actually cut. I, I felt like it deserved its own video. Now, keep in mind, this is not about any one particular system. Most multiplayer games have it. Most use it in various different ways. They will have different systems. And for us, we are going to look at skill-based matchmaking from more of a general design perspective so that this video can be applied to whatever your game is, whether it be COD, Halo, Apex, Dead by daylight, whatever. Now, concerning the relationship between casual and competitive players, we brought up the concept of the skill gap, where your game has a skill floor and a skill ceiling. Best case scenario is we have a low floor and a high ceiling. If you're interested in ways to achieve that, check out my other video, I'll link it in the description. However, here's an important point. Concerning your skill floor, I do not consider that the starting point for players. I consider that the starting point at which they have a firm grasp on the fundamentals of the game, and they have at least a surface level understanding of how the game works. Games with a low skill floor will be able to get players to that point faster. However, some games that have just naturally more complex rules and more upfront things that need to be learned, they may have a higher floor independent of whatever their ceiling is. At which point, we need to onboard those players. We need to create spaces where we can teach them and games go about that in different ways. But ideally, the gap between the floor and the ceiling is as far as the design allows and the floor is as low as the design allows. And when we have a large disparity of skill, I do believe it's important that we generally limit the exposure that players who are progressing through this chart have to deal with players who are closer to the end. Now, don't get me wrong. I look at the modern gaming landscape. I see the evidence in the arguments against SBMM, and I agree with a lot of them, and we're going to talk about it. But there are some arguments that are not as good. They're not as compelling, and I think it's important we address those too. Because right now, skill-based match making is a little bit like the boogeyman. Everybody is up in arms about it. It gets blamed for shit that's not even real. And I think it is ill-advised to make bold sweeping claims like, you know, SBMM is ruining gaming and it should be removed. No, its implementation is not great. We've always had it to some degree, but now we are starting to focus more on manipulating engagement than actually just finding the best match. And we just need to design it better. But let me give you a couple of scenarios and arguments that I'm not fond of. The first is that, hey, sometimes I just want to relax. I don't want to have to sweat every time I play just to win. I'll say this, if playing against people who are just as good as you makes the game not fun, then one of two things are at fault. A, you're the problem, or B, the game is mechanically flawed. To address the first point, if you are looking to get on and just unwind and, man, I don't really want to have to sweat and this means closely balanced, tightly contested games are a negative to you, this is ultimately a you problem because there is no solution. In order to give you the games that you are looking for, we would have to pair you with people who are not as good. So naturally, this is a sentiment mostly spoken by those that are in the upper half of the skill gap. You hear this from streamers a lot, even if they claim themselves to be casuals in the sense that that is their mindset, they are mechanically in the higher echelon of players. So let's say we turn SBMM off, which a lot of people advocate for. When we turn it off for high skilled players, there are naturally more people under them than above them. On average, their lobbies will be filled with players who are not as good. However, when we turn it off for people that are onboarding or at the start of the skill gap, then on average, most of their lobbies will be filled with people who are way better. Even the people who are in the middle who probably represent the majority of the population, if we turn it off completely, we will be exposing them to literally the entire spectrum. So the problem with this idea where I just want to get on and relax, we have to damage the experience of other players in order to give you that. The players that are just starting that want to get on relax, how do we give that to them? There's not enough people who are worse. The people who are in the middle and want to relax, well, it's a crapshoot. They might get paired with gods or they might get paired with noobs. The only players where this works, the only players where we can alleviate that issue is for the people that are close to the top. Where by law of averages, if we decrease or remove the matchmaking parameters, they will, on average, match up with players who are worse than them. Even in practice, I don't think this works. Say you have a casual or social playlist and you think, well, why would we consider skill in a casual playlist? That's where people go to relax. But what about an actual casual player that maybe plays a couple hours a week that wants to hop on and relax? Oh, well, sucks for them. Let bad players be bad, right? You create an environment 
where the casual playlists are the worst possible place for casual, less serious players to actually be. They would ironically be better off playing ranked where they have more protection. You might as well call the social playlist noob fishing, or after a couple months of being montage fodder, they're either going to migrate to a place where they don't have to play with you, or they'll just quit. And you'll be left with nothing but good players, and you'll think to yourself, well, this is a casual playlist. Why is everyone so sweaty and try hard? Did they turn skill-based matchmaking back on? Do we increase the parameters in casual modes? Absolutely. Let's allow for more variance, but the polarities really should not be interacting with each other. However, maybe the reason players feel this way sometimes is because of option B, and that's that the game is flawed. If you can only have fun by going 26 and five, that's not sustainable. A game has to be fun all the time, even when you're losing, even when you're going negative, because if it's only fun when you're going 34 and seven and your name seldomly leaves the kill feed, your game's not gonna make it because only a handful of players would even be able to do that consistently. And it is always going to be at the expense of players who are now not having a good time. So the game has to be fun at an even playing field or else your game has no chance. If you are a high level player and you know all the movement tech and you are crazy fast and you can do a bunch of crazy shit, but you don't think it's fun to play against the people who do the same things that you do, if it doesn't say something about you, then it absolutely says something about the game. If your movement tech and skill is only fun to use against people who don't know how to deal with it, then it might be an indication that the game has some mechanical deficiencies. We cannot have a game where mechanics are only fun when you're dishing it out. They have to be compelling to fight against. And if you're miserable playing against people that play like you, then everybody you play against will be miserable too. Well, you know, Fab, did you think about this? Uh, Skill-based matchmaking encourages smurfs and reverse boosting. So we acknowledge both of those things are bad, right? We acknowledge that when you have a player in the lobby that is way better, it hurts the experience for the rest of the players. And you think the solution is to create an environment where they don't even have to make another account or throw games to find the lobbies they're looking for? I mean, come on. There's absolutely no system in the world where we can justifiably allow high skill players to consistently match up with low skill players. We cannot do it. If that's what players want, they need to consider how this will affect everybody else. But more importantly, I'd like them to ask themselves, could this possibly be the game's fault? Is it actually mechanically compelling or does it only work in a very narrow range of encounters and against very specific players? We discussed this a lot in my video regarding casual and competitive design. If we have a ton of movement and skill expression, but we simultaneously offer easy ways to mitigate it, then we shrink our skill gap and we make it frustrating for players, right? If you have a ton of movement, but the game has too many easy guns with ridiculous aim assist, then the level of competency and understanding that a player has to reach in order to ruin your day, it's not very high, which means to get to those experiences where you are dominating matches, we have to go even further towards the bottom of the barrel to find people who are onboarding or really bad, just to even create that significant of a disparity. I understand it feels good to have insane games like that. I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but we can't create an environment where that happens intentionally and with consistency. But I think this type of argument that I described, it exists. We have to address it. But I do not think this is the crux of the problem. I do think SBMM has become an issue. And now that we've dealt with the people who leech onto this argument just because they want to pub stomp, we can get to the more legitimate concerns. And once again, it starts with our beloved devs or whatever research team was in charge of coming up with all this shit just completely overthinking, losing the plot, losing the whole point of what we want to experience as players. And again, so much of how we match players together has become paradoxical. Overall matchmaking systems, and it's not just SBMM, it's literally just how they calculate engagement metrics in general. We are way too in the weeds with the data, and it feels as though we are prioritizing the macro outcome of things instead of the micro enjoyment of an individual match. We are more worried about trying to push win rates as close to 50-50 as possible, or KD as close to 1.0 as possible, or team average as close as possible, that we've forgotten that the actual point of matchmaking is just to get the best match possible. If we reduce human emotion to a number, or we try to calculate satisfaction in an overarching algorithm, then we lose sight of the intimate or root level interactions that 
actually create that for people, right? If you are successfully creating strong matches, a natural result of that may be close games. It may be that players are winning just as much as they're losing. It may be that they're succeeding just as much as they're failing. If that happens naturally, then fine. But when we take those metrics and we associate and base the success of a system on the end results, then we run into trouble because we start to design our systems to achieve those end results. And when the end results are all that matters, the process, which is where we actually derive the enjoyment from, that becomes obfuscated and lost in the algorithm. For instance, instead of us being matched in good games and naturally we kind of win some, lose some, do good in some, play bad in others, instead the algorithm steps in and tries to create matches with predictive outcomes. If you start winning too much, well, then you may be intentionally put in lobbies where you have a greater chance to lose so that your numbers even out. Or vice versa, if you're on a losing streak, the game may try to look for wins. You know, oh man, we gotta pat this guy on the back a bit and keep them engaged. They are very intentionally trying to force and heavily influence outcomes. And in competitive multiplayer games, it's horrible. The reason sports and competition is compelling in general is because of your potential to influence the outcome. When these systems work against us, we feel that, and it literally ruins the integrity of the whole reason we're playing in the first place. And you know, I don't really want a participation trophy either. I don't want to be fed wins just because I'm on a bit of a losing streak. And just to give you a little insight on this, I was watching Mint Blitz, who did a video on Halo's SBMM not that long ago, and he was going through documentation on True Skill 2, which is the system that Halo and other Microsoft games use. And he gets to this point in the documentation where it says that True Skill 2 can predict match outcomes up to 68%. That's huge. That means the team it wants to lose only overcomes their waiting 32% of the time, more than enough for people to feel like they're being bullshitted. And ironically, they talk about this as if it's an improvement over True Skill 1, which was only at 52%. You know what's funny about that? The True Skill 1 system would feel better. In fact, if you want to design a system that actually feels good to us, the player, you would want this to be as close to 50% as possible because that would mean you can't predict the outcome. And the reason you wouldn't be able to predict the outcome is because the contest would actually be fair and the contest would be decided almost solely on the merits of the players themselves. And it kind of makes sense that True Skill 1 was at 52%, because skill-based matchmaking has been in matchmaking since its inception, since Halo 2. And whether it was perfect or not, of course it wasn't, but it sure is shit better than it is now, because it was about the individual match, not the end result. This concept often materializes itself with the complaint that, you know, oh man, I get on, I have a good game, and then my lobbies are ruined for the rest of the night. And then after a while, you know, I'll get thrown in with some horrible players, I'll dominate, and then just go straight back to having bad games. The sense is that these systems are very, very quickly calculating your win, and then trying to offset that by very quickly throwing you into a far more difficult lobby. This should not be happening. The swings and the disparity of players that we play with should not be this violent, absurd jump from lobby to lobby. That is a side effect of the system attempting to encourage outcomes. Our skill does not improve that quickly. When we get into a game, we are not 100 times better for the next game we play. It takes weeks and months to little by little get gradually better and better. We may have a good game, but that doesn't mean our skill has improved. SPMM should gradually migrate you to whatever your skill ceiling is. It shouldn't be, you know, oh man, you won two games, here, go play some gods. It should be, hey, you are consistently winning. You are consistently performing well, and we are gradually moving you up the chain so that we can more accurately find the best range of players for you. Eventually, you may reach a point where you're winning and losing just as often, but that's just because you're consistently getting good games. You've reached your threshold, and you need to get a little bit better. Once we successfully migrate you to where you actually are, then we can give you a range of experiences. I do not think the system should be so strict that you literally only play people who are just like you. Sometimes your games are even, sometimes your opponents are on average a little bit better, and that's okay because it's good for you to be exposed to behavior and strategies and techniques that maybe you don't know yet. And sometimes you play people who are not quite as good because they need to see what the next step is. And you get to be like, oh yeah, man, these guys aren't even doing this or they don't know about this. We're way better and you get to be better. That's not an outcome we have to force in an algorithm. That will happen naturally if we just gradually and thus more accurately get you to whatever skill threshold you are at and naturally match you with people within a reasonable radius. And that's healthy. 
What feels bad is the swings. What feels bad is just how inconsistent your experience is. What feels bad is that you get on and you micromanage your evening, like, you know, maybe I should throw this first game or use an intentionally shitty loadout or whatever, because you are consciously fearful of the algorithm, horrified that if you play good, you're not going to get to have any more fun that night. And it's just an absolutely bizarre position to put players in. And another absolutely bizarre position is when we intentionally put players of clearly, and I mean not even remotely, close skill levels on the same team as one another. This is how you know we've lost the plot. This is how you know the outcome has become more important than the individual experience and that the logic of why we even put players together has become paradoxical. A lot of games will balance teams based on average team skill. What this means is that different players will be weighted differently, and so if you are an extremely good player and the system wants to take you down a notch, they may intentionally match you with a team of far less skilled players so that they can equal out the average skill of the other team. I used Mint Blitz earlier, and I'll use him again here. He's an extremely good player. He gives some examples of his games where his teammates were not even in the same stratosphere. And it's pretty clear that there is an attempt to offset his weighted skill. And I see this all over. I see this from COD players, Overwatch players, you know, oh man, SBMM is so bad. It's trying to make me lose by pairing me with people who have no idea what they're doing. But it's worse than that. Because yeah, it's usually the guy on top that I see complaining, but look at these three poor souls. You think they had a good time? Do you think the SBMM was working for them? Do you think it was doing a good job of protecting less skilled players here? Don't get me wrong, I empathize with guys who find themselves on top of lobbies that had no chance of winning because their teammates gave them no chance. But make no mistake, nobody is having fun here. Nobody wants a game like this. It's bad that good players are matched with shitty teammates to push outcomes, but it's fucking disgusting that these other players are sacrificed like livestock just so that they can act as a counterweight for the almighty algorithm. And you know what? I'm sure after this game, these three people were violently swung 180 degrees to some other lobby so that they could artificially even out their horrific experience. But having one win and one loss doesn't mean anything if you had two shitty games. Skill-based matchmaking has reached the point where we are intentionally matching people of significant skill disparity. A system that was at its inception designed to curate matches with players of comparable skill levels has been twisted and contorted and bastardized that it is now doing the opposite of what it was initially designed to do. Bad players are being matched with good players on purpose. And the reason we want comparable teammates is because they have a better chance of understanding the game at the same level that we do. As you get better, you understand more strategies, you understand more do's and don'ts, you understand more nuances. Even if you're not on the mic or on comms, there are unspoken things and just overall game sense that you develop. When players are matched with horrifically unbalanced skill levels, you can't play with them. It's not their fault, they just don't know. If you're playing a class-based shooter like Siege, as you get better, you start to understand various team compositions. You know, hey, if they take character A, it's bad to take character B. If we already have a hard breacher, we should maybe fill out the rest of the team with other types of operators. And then it may develop like, okay, you know, certain maps have certain strategies. You figure all that out as you play. And the more closely related and skill you are to your teammates, the more you'll be on the same page. In reality, for most games, you want skill-based matchmaking. You want it because you want it to ensure that your teammates can actually contribute and know what they're doing. Same thing in games like Rocket League, which does not necessarily have various different roles that you need to be aware of, but the game has so much mechanical skill that you still want to make sure your teammates are on a comparable level, especially if you're solo queuing. They need to understand the rotations. They need to be able to identify your position and the situation you're in so that they can correctly position themselves. As techniques and skill increases as you get better and better, it is absolutely essential that teammates are comparable because the game is literally just played differently. And unless you both know, you can't really play with each other. You can't give somebody a centering pass up in the air if the guy on the ground doesn't even know how to fly yet, right? And you know, we can't get mad at a game for making matches sweaty and asking to turn SBMM off and then get upset when our teammates are awful and we have to sweat to win in spite of them. The problem with modern SBMM and engagement-based matchmaking is execution. But I assure you, in most games, you do not actually want it to turn off. And again, if you think you do because you don't really care about how your teammates feel and all you care about is your own selfish experience and your ability to personally destroy lobbies, that's fine. I actually respect your preference as an individual player. 
but the game cannot be designed for you. Look, SBMM is a problem. It has been implemented very poorly across the industry. It is focused on the end result as opposed to the individual experience. It is leading to really bad environments. And worst of all, it has caused players to lose faith in the games that they are playing. Players don't trust the game. They can't trust the outcomes. They are second guessing everything now. And when people lose faith and they start to doubt the experience that they are having, leads to hysteria. We start seeing it when it's not even there. We start blaming it when it might not even be the problem. We start questioning the integrity of everything. Once you know it's skewed even a little bit, how far will they go? Are they secretly buffing and nerfing players? Are they giving some players more health? Are they intentionally ignoring my hit registration? Well, it has to be skill-based matchmaking. They're rigging the system. And that's why outcomes need to be left to us. We need to be the primary influence on who wins or loses. From a design perspective, you just need to put players in the best situation and let the outcome be whatever it ends up being. And once we have the clarity that that's how that works, It'll just alleviate so much tension and anxiety that has built up regarding this topic. Oftentimes you'll hear these devs refer to wanting to make matchmaking like a roller coaster. They want you to feel the highs and lows. They are designing these systems for you to feel that. But the problem is that a roller coaster is a ride. We don't have any dominion over that. We want to control the vehicle. We want to be responsible for our own journey, our own ups and downs. It's meaningless to fabricate those outcomes because those outcomes only matter if they were outcomes that we reached. The goal of SBMM should be to create the best match possible, period, for every player. And I mean every single time, every single match, not five bad matches, then okay, you know, we'll throw them a bone, give them some good matches now, no. And yeah, there should be variants, but that variance should occur naturally just because the individual matches are compelling, not because an overarching system is dragging us to some equilibrium to try and achieve the end result. If you win a game, the very next time you queue into matchmaking, okay, cool. Now what's the best game? Not, oh, they won, let's turn up the heat. No, the next best game, period. Gradually, over time, we will navigate you to your skill threshold and we will create a range. This is not a horrifically strict range. I think a healthy variance is good even in ranked and in social modes. I don't think we turn it off completely. We still want to protect the polarities from each other, but we can certainly widen it. The system is designed for everybody, not just the average player, but the brand new player and the seasoned veteran as well. One of the big arguments against SBMM is that players at the polarities have trouble finding experiences because there are not as many players at their level. Most players are in the middle. Just another problem devs have made more complicated than it needs to be. If you have a player that is so good that he literally doesn't have anyone to play with, if there are so few of these people that there literally are not enough of them to consistently find matches with one another, then put them in a game. If they represent such a minuscule portion of the population that there is not enough of them to find games, then there's not going to be enough of them to significantly damage lower ranks. If a player reaches that point, yeah, you know what? They just get to be better than everyone, and they'll occasionally be making guest appearances in the lower bracket. Let's not make it worse. Let's not give them shitty teammates on purpose to try and offset them. At that point, yeah, you just get to be the best, and we will put you in the next best possible game. Vice versa for new players or bad players who are so bad that nobody out there is at their skill level, put them in a game. If you're afraid of them losing and getting discouraged and quitting, what, you think not playing at all or having horrific matchmaking times is going to keep them around? Put them in a game. The lowest you can find with a good connection. On both ends of this spectrum, they will represent natural variants. It's okay. It's actually good. If our games are actually designed well, skill-based matchmaking will enhance their experience. If we have a game with a healthy skill gap, then we want to accommodate players at both the beginning, middle, and end of it. And if we have a healthy skill gap, then we want to match players accordingly so that they can naturally progress through it and learn the game with each other. It actually helps teach them, and that's why we also need that variance, and we need it to not be insanely strict so that we can expose them to neighboring levels, and also to decrease match making times and get the best connections possible because equal skill levels don't mean shit if people are teleporting across the map. 
To use Rocket League again, it has a beautiful skill gap. It is super approachable in the sense that it is easy to understand. You just need to hit the ball and get it in the goal. You could show your 90-year-old grandma this game and they'd be like, oh yeah, you know, I get it. And as long as she's playing with 90-year-old grandpa, they're both gonna have a good time. But the skill ceiling is in the stratosphere. At the start, you'll just be rolling the ball around, but you'll start to learn how to shoot it, how the different parts of your car will affect the ball in different ways. For instance, your wheels hit the ball more softly. Then you start getting faster and you start controlling it a bit and you start flying and you start learning how to catch it, get it on top of your hood and carry it. Then you learn how to flick it and you just keep adding technique after technique. And someday, probably years, you could do this. Mechanical is lost days. I mean, everyone knows that Lost is one of the most mechanical players in the world. Everyone knows that he's been grinding recently, but he just cannot stop Zen. Personally, I'm a diamond level player in Rocket League that's like average, maybe slightly above average. And a pro could literally 1v3 three diamonds, okay? That's how big the skill discrepancy is. And it's, it's awesome. It's awesome to have a huge skill gap like that. It's super fun at low levels and it's fun as you progress, but it only works if we can gradually increase your skill and have you play with people that are comparable to you. As you move through the ranks, you don't just play differently, you see the game differently. Ask any Rocket League player how it feels when they get a teammate that doesn't know how to play at their level. It sucks. If your game has a compelling skill gap, you need SBMM. If you think your game doesn't need it, well, you know, I don't know, maybe that says something about your game. But again, I don't think people would have a problem with it at all, as long as it was implemented correctly. Ironically, Games keep telling us they are designed for everybody, but in reality, they're just trying to keep everybody from leaving. They're not fulfilling us. They're not satisfying us. They're preying on our psychology. They're preying on our tendencies. They're preying on our thresholds of tolerance and constantly pushing our heads underwater and letting us gasp for air at very meticulously timed intervals. Games are not made for our enjoyment. They are made for our engagement. And the worst part is they are abusing and thus vilifying a system that can actually really do a lot to make your game better. The industry has turned the concept of fair games and the system responsible for delivering it into the boogeyman. And it's reached a point where people would rather navigate the wilderness alone than be guided by a system that they know is purposely leading them astray. But matchmaking is supposed to bring us together. It's supposed to get us invested. It's supposed to encourage us and improve our experience. It's supposed to give us gradual progression and foster healthy growth. And when implemented correctly, it will foster a vibrant community. Developers, publishers, researchers, whoever you are, if you get out of the way and focus on just bringing us together and building a system with integrity and quite frankly, common sense, that'll keep us engaged. But when you design your whole system on engagement itself, it'll only push us away.